So. That's the more you know fact of the day. <laughs> Look at that. Hot him. Yeah. I'm here to help. Okay. And so if somebody wanted to catch your reviews um, or follow along, because we have a lot of listeners that are heavily entrenched in the wellness lifestyle, a lot of the smokables. Um, what? How can someone follow the adventures and the reviews? That is so nice. Thank you for asking. My reviews are all at heavy.com, or you can click the link in my bio on Instagram, which is at Cecilia May Use Too Many Words. There you go. Nailed it. I um, I will check it out. But, yeah, y'all definitely need to as well. We'll tag them. Yeah, you'll be tagged in this, and I'll start following you on Instagram after this as well. The phone is not doing what it's supposed to. It's looking at Chris. Like, oh. the fuck we're doing that for? That's crazy, yeah. Because I only realized it was, oh, it is recording. No, it's not. When it was on it me, been like, recording solely, for, I was kind of nervous. Okay. It actually hasn't hey, been recorded. Hey, we hey, recorded, hey, like, really now we're both recording. here. I got really nervous. We did, it's not recording at all. It actually, I got, like, 14 text messages and an alert from Bumble. So you're safe. <laughs> I, have I saw a guy. The girl on Bumble is not. brings up, like, the funniest story from yesterday. I never go to the gym. I went to the North Boulder Rec Center for a little while yesterday to, like, go to the sauna yeah, and do some stretching. A dude was, like, in there in short shorts wearing a Bumble hat. I was just confused. I was like... Yeah. Oh, like I'm pretty hat, sure like, it was a Bumble hat. Yeah. So they saw, Bumble, Bumble does a lot of sponsorship out okay. of Colorado. They okay, worked in like the X Games at Aspen. I saw their stuff there. And if you go up there and show them your profile, which y'all won't know this, but it's just a heavily it's it's populated app, <laughs> very populated. Um, Never been. Thank God. <laughs> teach the rest. Miss internet dating. Thank yeah. God. I mean, yeah, missing internet dating, you know, teach their own. Again, like, when you find, you know, true love's counterpoint in another, you don't have to worry about that. That's but nice. Bumble, yeah, bump, thank you. I'm glad you called that. So <laughs> uh, But uh, that, was an, that was a quote from uh, Wedding Crashers. Well, you know, it's kind of it's okay, messed yeah, up that yeah. – It's kind of messed up that – Even more poetic. I mean, like, <laughs> it's not like everybody – you can't slam internet dating. We don't have the power to be up on stage and to, like, look at a girl <laughs> – and just be strumming along and being like, yeah. And then she sees you, and it's like, yeah. Do you have Afterwards, a hot tub? yeah. She's like, you have a hot tub? Because I want to hang out. So with that you. hotel, Hotel Jerome. <laughs> yeah. Hotel Jerome, the nicest place in that. That's my move. That's your move right there. I stole a robe too. I still have that robe. Nice. That's a nice little. You know how tidbit. some people like frame their wedding dress? You should frame. That. We should be frame like, that robe. I'm sure you got charged for that, but I wouldn't. No, worry about never it. did. Oh. Dude, the Jerome has a. Closet of heated robes outside by the hot tub. It's insane. I wouldn't know. This sounds like a I have a hot tub kind of thing. Yeah, I, I yeah. Never had that Join before. a band, you might get there. Yeah, this podcast okay, is so, doing goddamn well. Thanks, Andy. So I am looking. Tour. I am looking for a career change. How hard yeah. would it be? I'm 30 ish. How hard would it be for me to just get into the music biz? You know. I looked up how to how to get fired from my job today. <laughs> so if that tells you anything, what's your job right now? Don't worry about it. Okay. It's neither here nor there. <laughs> they don't know that he does this side gig where we test THC and right. record ourselves. Right. Talking. But anyways, my job sucks. <laughs> And I th- the music the business monkey. seems really fun. He works in a cube and hates it. The, I mean, you know, there's good things and bad things about the music industry. There's a lot of ways you can get in. You can, like, manage. You can book. You can do publicity, marketing. There's so many things you can do. Everybody forgets, like, how much behind-the-scenes stuff happens in the music industry. I know because I've been doing a lot of the shit that I don't usually do, and I hate it. It's terrible. So basically, don't do marketing. Don't do booking. Don't do management. Unless you're into that kind of thing. Unless you're a planner. Yeah. yeah. Then you'll basically be back to working we'll this up again. again. Not a cube, though. You can, like, work so Right. But you get music on top of that. You get music on top of it. You get to work in a more artistic environment. There's some creative stuff. But to get into the music world, like, through playing music, it's a little tougher. You have to just learn instruments. Yeah. But so much of it now can just be your image. That but, dude, I'm I'm really good at Guitar Hero. Like right. I've never played. You well, probably, I mean, like, that's right. Like, time out. You've never played the game about being a rock star no, as a rock star? Never. I mean... I'm not allowed to play video video games, games, so we don't do that. And you you know, not allowed to play video games. Okay, that's understandable. I wouldn't say it that harshly, but it's better for me. Okay, so riddle me this: What do you do? I mean, I guess you can walk. Y'all live in nature, so you get high and you don't play video games. Yeah. (laughs) We're like stare off into space. Go cut up. Go cut Christmas trees down. Listen to uh, right. Christmas playlists. That's what I was about to ask you know. your wife. All right, so Cecilia, what's your Christmas song of your choice? Oh my 
Man. If she sides with me, it's just going to go ahead and wreck this episode because I'm going to be the like, champ. All around, like, classic one? Whatever you want. Whatever. Big Michael Blue Blue. Or just who Blue are you? Blue who Blue are you? What Blue albums Blue are you pulling Michael out Blue for Blue Christmas? I had, like, a Dolly Parton Christmas album playing the other day. I mentioned that. It's fantastic. Okay. okay. All right. I mean, but that's, like, everybody in America loves Dolly Parton. I know. You it might have been a Dolly single. Okay, okay. Uh, if she runs for president in 2020, guess who's vote uh, she's got? <laughs> this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Screw Oprah. I want Dolly. Yeah, free day at Dollywood. I would love it. I've been to Dollywood, actually, so <laughs> nice. my mom took me when I was a kid. I That's did Opryland awesome. growing up. Before, been there, too. Before it closed, because now the park is closed and the hotel still exists, I think. I remember staying there and it had, like, the waterfall and the, the slides and all that jazz, but I've never done Dolly World. And now I just feel like I'm missing Dollywood is great. Or Dollywood. Sorry. Got Dollywood. Ahead of Come on. Well, now, like, say it's not snowing and you haven't been stuck in your house like you have been for the past few weeks, which we've heard. Um, what do you guys like to do when you both have, like, a day off and you're able to... I mean, I used to like to go skiing. Right. Things have changed. Is it just that? Did you have... I mean... I didn't get a pass this year, but because he broke his leg. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Put the damn on. To having to hold. I can I see was the motivator. You know, I was like, I was too motivated. So did she's you, happy as shit now. Did you? I break? used to be like waking up at 5:30 every day that I had nothing to do. Me like, let's fucking go skiing now. Get up. I him shaking. you be like, the snow report says 10 inches. <laughs> Sounds miserable. Like, I'm a North Carolinian that moved out here and wanted to ski. Hence, I broke my leg. So how bad did the trees? Too did early. you break your leg? Like really bad, or? pretty bad. I guess. I mean, and then you know, I didn't rest after breaking it. I had surgery. I got a rod in there. Ooh. And then I was on New Year's tour like four days after my surgery, and then straight into tons of gigs. And yeah, it just never healed properly. That's what happened to my arm. I went on a canoeing trip after I broke it, and I was like, well, I can just canoe like this in an elbow size cast. And they came back and they're like, yeah, you need surgery, good <laughs> sir. And I was like, yeah, it's not fun. I have a rod. I never knew that uh, a leg break could be this bad. Luckily, the band was doing the living room tour that year, so we were already planning on sitting down at all of our shows. But what? That is so that was of, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of weird. They like they pre-boarded me, is what they called it. I was on crutches. Everybody? I went out there before everybody. And then people and just like, look at you. And the tour manager, Larry, would be like, all right, Andy, we're almost ready. Like, okay, let's pre-board you. So I would slowly crutch across the stage. But then, like, what if Vince decides to smoke a joint backstage? I was sitting up there for, like, five minutes by myself on New Year's Eve. And, like, the people are right in front of me. I got my leg in a cast, like, out on this pillow. And I'm on painkillers. I'm super high. I'm just like... That's Please kind of, come out and join me. Did you there. say anything Please. on the mic during that time, or is it just remember. silence? <laughs> That's I think I waved and nodded. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of because usually when when the band comes out, everyone stands up and they're like, yeah, and the lights kind of cue. Nope, like here magic. just comes Peg Leg. I mean, he's like just taking a seat off. He's just hopped up on Percocet. <laughs> the worst was at that big, uh, Bluegrass Underground, the gig they do in the cave the ca- out in Tennessee. I was going to ask you about the cave. Dude, that's a long entrance. <laughs> like, they can only drive you in on the golf cart so far. I had to crutch in front of, like, 800 people, probably for about 100 yards. Didn't your bandmates like, help you out? What are they going to do? I mean, it's easier just to like, crutch yourself than try to get a piggyback. I don't know. Right? Maybe so, come with you for some support. Were, were you there, Cecilia? Me, they were... I wasn't there for that one. Jeez. I always wanted to carry him on stage because most stages are not ADA accessible. I'm like, do we want a drunk guy carrying you onto the stage? I don't Ooh, that's a good point. Trying to get on the stage at Cervantes is fucked with crutches. There's no handrail. I've come on, Cervantes. I've tried to get up there a couple times Scott, just to need a handrail, two buddy. legs and can't do it. Add a handrail. Cervantes is not ADA accessible? The stage could use a handrail. That's all I'll say. Man, you remember that rain stick store we talked about? The things that need Purelling? Imagine a handrail at Cervantes. That's, that's way worse than the rain stick. Yeah. The first time I went to Cervantes, I came out here in 2009 for a panic three-day run at the Pepsi Center. And so it was like a Thursday before the Friday, or whatever, the, the night before the panic run. And I, we went to Cervantes, and I had never been to Serbs. And there used to be that little office upstairs on the second round, and there was, like, a blocked-off room. And they were just selling nitrous balloons out of there. And I was like, whoa, this is where I'm moving. And it was kind of like your come-to-Jesus moment you had that summer with uh, Andy. or No, who was it? Was it? 
Who did you party with? Oh, when I met the guys in Durango? Yeah, yeah. Was when I met the, Anders and Anders, Travis. Yeah, sorry. I was like, time out. Who did you meet? Yeah. Um, that was my come to Jesus. I was like, nitrous tank in the yeah. bar? I was like, I'm moving here. Totally. Yeah, I was like, hey, join a band with this guy that grows weed in his basement and hang out and be in a bluegrass band in Colorado. Yeah. Yes. It, and it's not as hot as North Carolina. No, it's not as hot and Less humid. mosquitoes. Uh, I don't know. Absolutely. Maybe not for y'all, but for us. In the city, there's no mosquitoes. I grew up with hell mosquitoes. Hell mosquitoes here, too. And fire ants. Yeah. Yeah. Alabama, North Carolina, Mississippi. Same deal. Oh, Cecilia, where are you from? I grew up in Connecticut. Oh. oh that's, a that's a zig to zag right there. I know. We're not going to ask you shit about barbecue. I love Connecticut. <laughs> I've come to realize. Lobster really? and rosé on the coast, on the Long Island oh Sound. God. I mean, it's fantastic. What private school are you going to send your kids to? Choate? Is it going to be Choate? No. I'm public all the way, baby. <laughs> there you go. Lobster and rosé. Look at this guy. I'm not Picking afraid banjo to fancy, by day, man. drinking, drinking rosé and eating lobster rolls. Fancy. <laughs> lobster and rosé is our second church it up. of this episode. <laughs> All Snow, right, so, hey, and the funniest ball. part about that story is that the sound man for Railroad Earth just moved to Cecilia's hometown. You just moved there. You just Not there just there. moved, sorry. Like, I'm talking too loud. No, no, no. I'm no, you're good. Off. No, I was, I was turning it so off. So Mike, Mike Partridge, who's the sound man for uh, Railroad Earth, moved to Cecilia's hometown. I think he lives in Stanford, Connecticut. And so we all went... Oh, Greenwich. And we all went to a uh, little Oceanside Club and had lobster and rosé a couple years ago, and it was so funny. Because he's from Alabama with, like, a ponytail and all that Okay. God, that sounds fantastic. It was great. It was fantastic. Like and we're all just like, God, I love this fancy lifestyle. It's so great. I could get used to this, is what you say next. And then you're like, don't. Absolutely. <laughs> um, shout out to our boy Bill. Uh, we just did a Northeast run. Uh, kind of just eating. His sister lives up there, and then I went shortly after him, and we have a buddy that lives up there somewhere in between Greenwich and Stamford. can't remember. Fairfield? Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He went to right Fairfield there. Prep. So. Wow. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just know that because my school was prep, but not that one. Oh. Uh, and that he's this six five ginger who uh, with this big afro and this long beard and just loves the disco biscuits. He's like my best friend. I love him. Oh, he sounds like a hoop. Oh, he's, yeah. It was a lot of fun partying with him in New York for a couple of days. So you Connecticut tans are pretty cool. I don't know, Connecticut's. Great question. Never, never got that one. Connecties. No. Connecties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like Connecties. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds right. I'd see, I told you this is a pretty serious podcast. It's so serious. Putting a southern spin on Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> we can chop it up. It'll sound somewhat. Oh, no. Good. Well, you edit this. Later. Thank God. You know, I think. I think. We turn May, but we may not. Who knows? I think what we need to figure out is more about these two. Is like, so since you come from North Carolina in a spot of whole hog barbecue, what's your favorite barbecue joint out here? Or have you found one? Out here? That's yeah. A great question. Out here, you know, honestly, after being in a bluegrass band all through college and after college, we played every every event we played served barbecue, which was amazing. But you know, you get tired of shit. So yeah, I don't go searching out good barbecue now at all. Oh, but good. the one place that we love is Moe's. Okay. Because we used to be in Vale all the fucking time. The Vale Moe's. We've had like some of our best hangs. Honestly, like one of the best hangs I can ever remember was that one afternoon at the Moe's and Vale. Did you get wasted? Yeah, we got so wasted. And Whiskey I, and shots. I got to play fiddle with uh, yeah. I got to play fiddle with the band, which was like Bob Masters and Patrick and some of those guys from Vale. And we were I mean, it was pure joy from everyone. And the food is so good. I love their smoked wings. I love those their wings are casserole. Dead. And they actually, what else do we like? You mentioned the sides earlier, like the collard greens you at that other place. Yeah. Moe's has the best sides that you can get of the just regular yeah. barbecue spots in That's the metro area. Definitely one of the reasons we love Moe's. It's and the Moe's down in uh, South Denver. What is that? Gothic. The Coming one near Gothic. the Gothic. Yeah. It's With the bowling alley? It has a bowling alley. We did a bunch of stuff there around our Thanksgiving shows last year. I think, yeah, they did. Yeah. They kind of I up mean, with the that. food is so good. And now that they've added, like, the fried shrimp po' boys and the catfish po' boys. Oh, I don't even know about See, this. And, oh, man. The Moe's in Tahoe is absolutely amazing. Shout out. And you know our boy Brian Lippman. He did yep. some work with the, the Mo- You know totally. Lippman as well? You, you made that face like, fuck, yeah, I know well. Yeah. We love Lippmans. We love all those guys. Yeah. If, you, great. if you really sit at Moe's for a few hours, you can get hammered off whiskey yeah. for cheap. Absolutely. Dangerous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been there before. Oh, 
yeah. for cheap or for free. Here, yeah. that one ever off the of, one uh, in Boulder is great, too. We don't go there too often. That's right next to the Dark Horse, actually. Shout out to our boy Trevor Freeman. He was the bartender there with Kyle Bear for a while there. But I will say they could add a couple